Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. The news this week. Prince Charles is suing the Mail on Sunday for printing diary extracts that were insulting to the Chinese. Charles' former royal PR man Mark Bolland revealed that the prince routinely shares his private thoughts with a group of 50 friends, or as most people call it, a window box. <laughs> According to Mark Bolland, the prince regards himself as a political dissident who longs to see the Chinese head of state replaced, although not as much as he wants to see the British head of state replaced. <laughs> prince Charles's court case does have a precedent. In 1849, Prince Albert took legal steps to prevent publication of some drawings. Mind you, they were of his recent piercing. <laughs> The FA announced that the new Wembley Stadium will not be finished in time for the FA Cup final in May. When it's completed, the new Wembley Stadium will have 2,000 toilets, more than any other building in the world. And that breaks down as 1,995 gents, four disabled and a ladies. <laughs> The tabloids have been full of stories of builders at the stadium taking drugs. Everywhere you look, there is electricians' cannabis, plumbers' cocaine and, of course, builders' crack. <laughs> it was revealed this week that ice on Greenland is melting faster than at first thought, which will lead to sea level rises throughout the world. According to expert predictions, there soon won't be much left of Kent, but what there is will still be subject to a hosepipe ban. <laughs> However, all the newspaper headlines were taken over by bird flu as the disease reached France. In China, no less than 14 billion ducks and chickens are being inoculated against bird flu. Apparently, the queue for the injections can be seen from space. <laughs> bird flu will affect lots of different sectors of society. Free-range goose farmers, grouse shooters, but most of all, chicken <laughs> Joining me tonight to work through a series of satirical games are six of the country's top comedy performers. John Oliver, Rory Bremner, Jeremy Hardy and Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Joe Brand. Welcome to you all. Our first round is called, If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories relating to current events. For the chosen category, I read out an answer and the players have to guess what the question might be. Joe, which category would you like? Uh, I like health, please, darling. OK, your category is health. The answer is up to 18 months. What is the question? Um, what is the minimum weight on the customer care line for British Gas? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it what is Stephen Hawking's personal best for the marathon? <laughs> How long does Abu Hamza take to lace his shoes? <laughs> <laughs> What's the waiting list for a bed in maternity? Is it, how long is a Scottish winter? <laughs> <laughs> how long does it take the average man over 40 to send a text message? <laughs> how long does it take Sting to ejaculate? <laughs> <laughs> See, no, it is a, I'll give you a clue. It's We're All Doomed is a clue. What? That's a hell of a clue, Dora. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of thing you usually shout at traffic. <laughs> well, I offered more as a kind of a hint. Oh. We're all doomed now. Uh, <laughs> is this uh, how long it's going to be before we drag the last chicken through the streets of London and stone it to death on the steps of the Big Brother house? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you dancing around here? Uh, it's there. something to do with bird flu, isn't it? It, it? it is kind of to do with bird flu. The question I was looking for is, according to one expert, how soon can we expect bird flu to be passed from human to human. This is the claim of John Oxford, Professor of Virology at London's Barth Hospital, who believes a human strain of bird flu could spread within 18 months. The male is, is loving this, the, 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 the terror that we're all stricken with. And you can see Daily Mail readers on the train reading articles about bird flu and vigorously underlining the words migratory and Europe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It pushes yeah, actually, every button, doesn't it? It's a complete change in the animal kingdom, though, isn't it? Because suddenly birds, chickens, are the most dangerous and powerful <laughs> animal in the world. <laughs> chickens must love it. Even when they're slaughtered, they'll be running around going, I can still infect you! <laughs> <laughs> for, up, for up to six minutes. It's only there, it's only there um, to reassure us. I was watching this on Newsround. I heard somebody on Newsround. <laughs> <laughs> Newsround is fun. I love Newsround, they say, Today, in a place called Abroad, sad things happen. <laughs> 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 I'm watching it, and, um, 
And, um, no, um, they, they said, you're all right. It's, what's dangerous to us is bird poo. So you're all right, so long as you don't touch a free-range egg or go outside. Because if you can get it from bird poo, we're, most of us, in danger all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry, birds are about as particular as a US Air Force when it comes to where they <laughs> drop their legs. <laughs> 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 but you'll, the only, I mean, the, you'll, you'll only get a bird poo if you actually sniff the bird poo, as in, like, you know, inhale. Who's inhaling bird poo? I mean, well, that's exactly. going to be one hell of a party, yeah. Darren. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone, have to go through everything at that stage. All we've got left is the bird poo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's it saying? And this bottle of creme de menthe. Give me the bird <laughs> poo. Uh... Everybody's really worried about when it's going to get to Britain. And it's already here, cos every dead swan, every dead duck that they've found, they've sent a sample in a test tube to Weybridge. <laughs> That's where we checked. Sent it in the British postal system. <laughs> To Weybridge. That's where Cliff so they're looking for an outbreak. You don't want to be looking in chickens. You want to be looking in postmen. <laughs> <laughs> probably I... near Camden Town, because that's where they think H5N1 is. <laughs> <laughs> so is the, the lab is in Weybridge. The is... lab they're testing him is in Weybridge. Because yeah. Cliff Richard lives in Weybridge, doesn't he? He'll be the first to go. <laughs> <laughs> Cliff Richard will be like the canary in the coal mine. We'll, we'll have him in the cage. <laughs> <laughs> Cliff finally collapses. No! <laughs> screaming from One of the yeah. problems with bird food is going to be is, is telling like half of the bird population whether they've really got flu or not. Because yeah. half of them are going to be going, oh, I've got flu. And in fact, they've only just got a bad cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does, anyone, does anyone know if Keith Harris and Orville are now doing bird flu material? No, but... <laughs> oh, I'd, oh, I'd love to fly, Keith, but I can't. I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> Dying, Orville. You know I am. Would you, you, know, you like to think that Keith Harris is taking elementary precautions, like gloving up before he actually starts? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. It would actually... make the ventriloquism a lot easier if he can wear a mask. <laughs> 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 what is that, Orville? You say you're very sick. Yes, I'm very sick at the moment. Yeah. I look forward to Bill Audi explaining this to us on the next series of Spring Watch in a radiation suit. <laughs> That, that's the problem. Ministers have tried to calm people down by using reassuring phrases such as no need to panic and very low risk, but that is the problem with language. There's no point wasting your time with words like that if you also plan to use words like fatal and pandemic, because <laughs> on the seesaw of loaded words, fatal pandemic is a very fat little boy, and he needs a lot more than a couple of no needs to panic to give him a, a fun day in a park. <laughs> He's just there at the moment, frightened. The methods used to cull the birds will vary from country to country. In the West, we'll be using mechanised slaughtering machines, but in China, they prefer the more traditional method of covering them in plum sauce and luring them into pancakes. <laughs> the other killer animal that emerged during the week was in Germany, uh, where, and we should only hope that these things don't go wild, the largest rabbit in the world. Uh, <laughs> I know, he's sweet, isn't he? But those paws on your head... Uh, <laughs> Are you sure either. that's not just, like, a really small bloke? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it looks like they're a couple. You <laughs> 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 just, just don't understand their love, do you? There'll be a film about that in 30 exactly. years. It's called Broken Bunny Mountain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the winners that round are Frankie, Hugh and Joe. The next round is called Between the Lines and features Rory and Hugh. Would you please make your way to the press pit? Thank you. In this round, one of them takes on the role of a person in the news addressing the media, while the other translates what they really mean. As he prepares to assume centre stage, Rory, you are Chancellor of the Exchequer, Gordon Brown, informing us of what lies ahead. <coughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, for nearly nine years now, I have been Chancellor of the Exchequer. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for nearly nine years now, I have wanted to be Prime Minister. <laughs> there has been much talk about a handover. I think it's more important than that. It's not just about myself and Tony. It's about the future of the country. It's my turn! <laughs> Throughout that time, I have controlled the economy prudently and sustainably. <laughs> One more stamp and I get a free cappuccino. <laughs> I know people find David Cameron attractive, but I have qualities that he doesn't. I'm big, I'm tough, and I'm hung like a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a great 
believer in national identity. OK, the moon. <laughs> but I don't believe in cultural stereotypes. Many a mickle makes a muckle. <laughs> I know that some people think that I'm dour and sullen, <laughs> and some people even think that I've, uh, I've got a lack of charisma. <laughs> Of course, looking forward to working with John Prescott. He's an able politician with robust views which he expresses most effectively. He's a fat, grumpy bastard. <laughs> well, the point from the Rory there. <laughs> okay, our next round is Le Cirque des Actualités. <laughs> <laughs> this game involved John, Frankie, Jeremy, and Joe. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is a stand-up challenge. Our random news generator <laughs> contains a bank of newsworthy topics. We spin the wheel, and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh about the subject it's landed on. Thank you. If I judge the player's got a big enough laugh, he or she is safe and gets to sit down again. OK, here we go. Our first topic is sport. Who wants to come in on that? John. So, the hunt for the New England manager is now on, but the most exciting thing about this is it's actually going to be a hunt. The FA have bought a pack of hounds. <laughs> <laughs> They've given them a sniff of Alf Ramsey's old hat and they were last seen marauding across the English countryside, tooting on their horns. Sport is now the only way to guarantee improvement in a country's transport infrastructure. Look, again, look at the Olympics. We're going to get this Olympic javelin train which will go from King's Cross to the Games in just seven minutes. But once again, the most exciting thing about <coughs> this is it's actually going to be a javelin. You're going to have to get on board it <laughs> like a witch would get on a broomstick and then Steve Backley is going to throw everyone <laughs> just short of their destination. <laughs> right, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is charity. Oh, Frankie. I tell you what I hate is comic relief. People sitting in a bath full of beans for starving Africans. Send them the bloody beans! <laughs> Homeless charities. You know, how come it is that we can get uh, charities that will take like, all the dogs off the streets and provide them at homes, but we can't do that for people? I'd like to see a, a TV show like Tramp Rescue. <laughs> and drinking heavily, arguing over games of pool. Perhaps you could provide a home for Kenny. <laughs> we never knowingly put a healthy tramp down. <laughs> ultimately, ultimately, if you can't afford to bring up your child, why not send him to Africa, where you can pay to have him brought up for £15 a month standing <laughs> on <order? laughs> Thank you, boy. Sit down. So we have Jeremy and Joe uh, going head to head in a tie break on one topic. Let's spin the wheel and find out what the topic is. It is hospitals. <coughs> Jeremy. Uh, well, there's two hospital stories this week. One is that 40% of people going into hospital have malnutrition because uh, you'd have to be starving to eat the food. <laughs> and the other one is the government is continuing to roll out its choice agenda that we as local people will have more control and more choices in our life. I mean, I'm not a consumer, I'm a patient. We all want the same thing when we go to hospital. We want to go there, not get MRSA, not have a scalpel sewn inside our kidney and come home again. <laughs> That's all we want. We don't have different criteria. You don't come out of hospital saying, well, I mean, you know, the operation wasn't up to much, but you don't go to Bart's for the surgery. You go for the atmosphere. <laughs> Very good, Jeremy. Jeremy, you can stand back there. Yeah. Joe, on the same topic, it's your turn on hospitals. Well, to me, um, the two big problems with hospitals are um, cleanliness and uh, communication. Now, when I had my first child, the room that I was in had um, blood all over the walls and urine on the floor. But uh, that's because my husband was pissed and we had a fight. But, um, <laughs> you know, it all gets a bit emotional. And, um, <laughs> When I was being uh, discharged from hospital, I, I couldn't believe that the consultant actually came into the room. I'd just given birth, right? I looked like a bus had gone over my face and I felt <laughs> depressed. 
and he came in and he said, um, I just want to ask you um, what sort of contraceptive you'll be using when you get home. <laughs> just run that by me again, would you? <laughs> what sort of contraceptive I'll be using when I get home? Mm, I thought I might just cling to the headboard and shout to my husband, <laughs> off or I'll call the police. <laughs> The next round is called Headliners. I show the teams a recent photo along with the initial letters of a newspaper headline. They then have to tell me what the letters stand for. Here's a picture of Wembley Stadium as it stands this week. So what does WSBS stand for? Is, is it, it Wembley Single Builder Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it just, well, surprise, bloody surprise? <laughs> Is it? We're surrounded by scaffolding. <laughs> Wembley six, builders seven. <laughs> Is it we sold both shovels? <laughs> Is it Wembley Stadium behind schedule? Yes, it is. Actually, oh, that's yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, okay. very good. It is Wembley Stadium behind schedule. This refers to the news that the new Wembley Stadium will not be ready for the FA Cup final in May. Do you know when it will be ready? Never. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Cardiff one's called the New Millennium Stadium and this one's going to be called the Next Millennium Stadium. <laughs> Is it basically we're waiting for the polar ice caps to melt and then we're all going to go and live in this? <laughs> How could it take so long? I mean, football stadium's only a few seats and some grass, isn't it? They haven't got to do a patio or anything. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right, that would have made it a much more complex job if they'd, if they'd tell Well, we like the 90,000 seats, but could you just push through this wall and open the area extra bit like this? <laughs> and we can put a barbecue there as well. <laughs> What's the who are the first people to be who are going to be playing there, then? Footballers. Our no. grandchildren's no. grandchildren. Is it Waddy <laughs> Waddy? No, it's likely to be Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Well, if they've got 500 seats in, they should just go ahead with a gig. Who <laughs> <laughs> are <laughs> Bon Jovi playing? Arsenal. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, actually, you could just play there, for God's sake. All you need is you do, those two pylons there, right? Just about 60 yards the other direction, put two jumpers down. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Away you go. You do you know what there. worries me about the whole stadium? They've, got, they've built the ring of the stadium now, but the cranes are still inside. <laughs> I just like the fact that they paid 20 million just to have the old Wembley taken down. They should have just had the last match against Scotland. We'd have done it for free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind the goalposts. I'm taking the director's box. <laughs> that, is, that is a fear that the first time they play Scotland, you're all going to climb up in the arch <laughs> and bounce up and down on it. <laughs> 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 the lesson is always get a couple of quotes. You know, don't just grab the yellow paper. <laughs> No call-out charge. Let's get this one. <laughs> uh, it would have been good to see the FA turning up on Watchdog. <laughs> oh, it's been a bloody nightmare, Anne. It really has. But there is a precedent for this in sport because actually, you know the ski jump they're using in the Winter Olympics? Because originally the ski jump was meant to be a roller coaster, right? <laughs> but they got in the builders, but they didn't finish it in time. They said, well, just leave it at that. We'll put a guy at the top and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Am I the only person who hates the Winter Olympics? Am I the only person that watches those people on the podium and think, you are the only three people in the world who do that sport. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's four, right, and they're standing there going, oh, at least we bet Brian. <laughs> bet Brian feels a bit stupid now. <laughs> but it's biased against the British anyway, because it would look like the downhill skiing, because that's not how we do it. The British, they ski halfway down, stop at a restaurant, nice lunch, couple of bottles of wine, <laughs> take the last chairlift down. <laughs> You know, and equestrian, what do we do well in Olympics? Equestrian sports, you can't do them on ice. Pointless. You, you, that is a bit harsher, well, right? Well, you could, but, but they don't. And if they did, they'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> just put the horse, sit on the horse at the top of the ski jump and go, giddy up now. Uh, and just uh, <laughs> see, see when the yeah, horse's you know, nerve exactly. breaks. Well, exactly. Yeah. In, in India. <laughs> I read last week, I think, there's a new thing, extreme sport, called yak skiing. Right. And you don't ski downhill, you ski uphill. On a what yak. you do is you get Ski some skis. No, you get some skis, and you attach yourself by rope to a yak, <laughs> which is at the top of the hill, and between you there is a pulley, and you infuriate the yak <laughs> by rattling a bucket of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you shake the bucket of nuts, <laughs> and the yak charges at you, <laughs> and you shoot up the hill on the ski. <laughs> Which has got a slight logical problem, because presumably at some point you must meet the yak. 
the idea for the Fantastic. You have so much speed over that stage, you can go, chug -a -chug. look at you, feck you, I've got the nuts there. <laughs> you have to go, oh, you. That is a lot better than the starter's pistol as well. Ready, set, infuriate the yak. <laughs> <laughs> he went a little bit early there, I'm going to have to call you back. <laughs> well, at the start of the day, is the yak oblivious to this? Is the yak just brought along thinking, oh, it's a nice day out in the mountain? No, the, yeah. yak, the yak fully understands what's going on. He's been yeah. read the rules. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's that's fair enough. It's the competitor they keep in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> It's just that moment where you see a dot on the horizon, you're going, that looks remarkably like a yak. Yeah. <laughs> it's bigger and bigger and bigger, and you go, oh, it is a yak. Yeah. <laughs> I seem to be tied to a pulley system with this yak. This is wrong. So, <laughs> if, the guy that, if the guy that owns Eurosport is watching this at home, he's going to be going, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of money in that. <laughs> in the Winter Olympics, it's causing some concern that so many of the athletes on drugs are competing in the biathlon, as they're the ones with guns. <laughs> After the Games, our skeleton Bob success Shelley Rudman is planning to enjoy a little time on her own. She's going to the British medal winner's party. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I have any high ground on that. Uh, so, the winners of that round are Jeremy, Rory and John. <laughs> we now play a round called Newsreel. We will play in a recent piece of news footage featuring some of the world's major figures and ask mm. two of our players to voice the characters. This mm. week, we've got film from Saddam Hussein's trial in Iraq. Rory, you are the judge, and Hugh, you are Saddam Hussein. Mm. One day in court. OK, uh, Saddam, uh, let's keep it short and uh, a nice round picture, please. Yeah. Uh, today, what would I like to sing for you? Um... <laughs> Banana rama, hits of banana rama. <laughs> no, no, we don't want banana rama. No, uh, I, I want you to sing some country. Sing some country music. Uh, well, okay, um, Johnny Cash. Uh, I walk the line. Everything. Uh, listen, I walk the line. I, I, I don't, I don't want to hear it. I got so many other people to hear you come and you give me this bullshit, Johnny Cash. Uh, you won't let me sing Johnny Cash. Uh, then I leave the court. I wear my underpants. I, I don't accept it. I sing Johnny Cash. I better look. This man, he knows over here who I point. Listen. I walk the line. Yeah, sir, you have to listen to this man. He has got the best voice you have ever heard. You know, you won't hear more per The pitch is... Ab I don't care. I don't care what you... Uh, you know, you talk to me about pitch. What is the bullshit? That bullshit. You are a bastard, though. I'd rather be on trial for genocide. Look, I have written the lyrics on my head. <laughs> Here, there. Everywhere Sir, if, if you do not allow this guy to stay in the competition, you are making the biggest mistake. Don't tell me, okay? At once, first he makes a thing, he writes the words down, he is gone. Finish. <laughs> what is it? I can sing yeah, or yeah, I you, cannot oh, sing. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> Listen. I walk the line. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Stop singing. <laughs> I think Rory Bremner gets all the points for that <laughs> round. Surely not. I think so. <clears throat> now we come to our final quick fire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see and the performers come in with their suggestions. Sure. Okay, here we go. <coughs> the first subject is what not to say on receiving a Winter Olympics medal. I hate my national anthem. Could you play Love on the Rocks? <laughs> Listen, blood, have you got one with, like, uh, like so, a ganja leaf or something like that on it? Or, like, maybe an AK-47? <laughs> this is great. I didn't even realise it was a sport. <laughs> Gold for Switzerland! I'll put it with the rest of the Nazi stuff. <laughs> Could you just hang the medal off my neck brace? <laughs> I'd like to thank my mother for providing my urine sample. <laughs> the goal for women's curling. This will take pride of place in the office that I clean. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> Sorry about the yellow stain at the top of the ski jump. <laughs> Thanks for the medal. The band was <laughs> Sir Roger, <laughs> Roger. And that's why we call him Four Man Bob. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Improbable things for Osama bin Laden to say in his tapes. This is ridiculous. It must be your turn to hide. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
What do you think? Lose the beard? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's enough talk from me. It's five to six and it's time for Al Qaeda's non stop music marathon. Less talk, <laughs> more music. Here's David Bowie with China Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! You're recording over my wedding video! <laughs> I've just seen the funniest cartoon. <laughs> Do you think this cave makes me look a bit gay? <laughs> <laughs> so, who could live in a cave like this? <laughs> Google Maps. <laughs> I'm Osama Bin Laden. And this is Silit Bang! <laughs> so, I've only just heard it. You get a yak and some peanuts. <laughs> it'll go. I'm coming out. <laughs> the next topic is... Unlikely things for a TV announcer to say. For those of you of a nervous disposition, you may be disturbed to know that your television is off and I'm speaking to you from inside your own head. <laughs> Next on Channel 4, wizened sanctimonious old jobby sniffer Gillian McKeith gets a slap from a fat housewife. <laughs> Well, that's it. Don't forget that BBC 24 goes through the night, as do I. <laughs> <laughs> and next on Channel 5, a sensitive documentary um, entitled The Boy Who Looked Like a Baboon's Arse. <laughs> You're watching ITV One. Uh, why are you doing that? I've got the, <laughs> I've got the listings in front of me, and we've got nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> you may be interested to know I am completely naked and playing with myself. <laughs> <laughs> we interrupt tonight's showing of The Sixth Sense with some breaking news: Bruce Willis is a ghost. <laughs> If you have been affected by any of the issues raised in Balamori... <laughs> Tonight's episode of Songs of Praise contains strong language and scenes of a sexual nature. <laughs> Let's leave it there. Thank you, the winner, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome back. <laughs> OK, come on back, man. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Joe Brown. <laughs> Commiserations to Jeremy Hardy, Roy Bremner and John Oliver. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Good night. Yes, well, here's another unlikely thing. John Colshaw is having a commercial breakdown on BBC One in five minutes. And what happens if Romeo and Juliet stay together? There's no jealousy in Othello and the Scottish play becomes Macbeth the musical. Kevin Eldon and Patrick Barlow bring Shakespeare's happy endings to BBC Four. And by the way, I'm not naked. <laughs> <laughs>